Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, we are going to edit Cutthroat Mod Partners. I am using Baron's uh, edit already. We will be removing the force greeting and reducing the amount of fights. Also, we're going to fix a number of errors in the script, create our companion and create a beast companion. Let's do this. The first thing we want to do is edit the scripts. Morrowind Edit is a better tool for that because it's going to be a lot clearer. So you want to make sure that your mod is active and then you load it. We're going to go and have a look at the scripts. Obviously you can do that in a construction set as well, but with the Morrowind Edit you're going to be able to indent your scripts. You're going to have some uh, color coded color codes for uh, functions, variables, numbers, that sort of things. The first thing we want to do is remove the force greetings. It's not broken, it's just that I don't like it. The way I'm going to remove it is simply comment out the lines with force greetings. Here I'm commenting out the whole little paragraph. There's just no point telling Morrowind, hey, if uh, the NPC wants to be paid, then do nothing. We have no problem with force sneak here. I only comment out force greeting because I want the rest to happen. The other thing that bothers me a little bit with partners is that NPCs or rather partners might just turn on me very suddenly. This is controlled by a variable called hate. And if you look at it, the way it works is if the NPC dislike you, depending on your rank, which is if you're friends, companion or partners, and depending on the alignment, they just might hate you. And then if they still dislike you, if they already hate you and you're not already fighting, then they're going to start attacking you. That's when you have set fight to one. What I'm going to do to avoid that, I'm simply not going to let the script set hate to one. If hate is always zero, then fight is never going to be set to one. That way NPCs will still dislike me, but not enough to, you know, go on a rampage and kill me. Now, Morrowind Edit is really good in the way that when you compile, you're going to see errors that appear and just double clicking on the message will take you there. Here, we just had a variable that was announced twice. Same thing with those three. Mind you, it's not that it broke the script, it didn't break the game, it didn't break the mod, but you know what? Morrowind is a little bit um, touchy, so how about we just make it a little smoother? What we have here is an issue with the 34th variable and clearly uh, the mod author had already taken that into account but I'm guessing the script being edited and modified afterwards the position for the bogus variable was not in the 34th slot anymore so here I know that currently NPC Magica is the 34th variable I'm going to paste my unused variable and that will sort it Let's see what we have next. Uh, here we're being told that we expected a function, but we get a global. For this one, to be fair, I was not entirely sure. So I went over to the Morrowind modding discord and guys confirmed that all I have to do is remove player and that's it. To get the value of a global, you just go if the global is more than one, then something happens. We don't need to have player. Yes, we also need to remove it on the second line. Honestly, I could have looked at it myself, but never mind. What do we have next? We have a non -un token. Yeah, here it's better to have the note point three. So you know what? Let's just put the note point three. As you can see, these are not like errors that break the scripts, but it's always better to, you know, yeah, start playing with a game that has no warnings. This is the same thing as we had before, but this time it's a float variable. Now I don't need to copy that, I can just go down. I know that pastime is a 34th, so here I'm gonna add a new unused variable, creatively named unused2. I think we should be good. Now, what do we have? Oh yes, the get armor type. Now this one, to be sure how to use it, I had a look at the wiki. I don't really, you know, I can't script. So what I need to do is look at the scripting for dummies. I like the wiki very much because it's going to show me, no, 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 stay there. Nah, oh, it's going to show me an example of how it's used. And it's really, really quite straightforward. And here clearly, if we want to get the armor type, first we need to say which part on the body. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna add the one. 
That way, we're going to set the NPC armor to whatever type of armor my Quiras is. I figured Quiras is going to be your your main armor. How is... Yes! This is done. Whew! We indent it. Nice. And we save. This is done and ready. We're going to do the same thing for all the other scripts. Um, the same sort of changes. There were different little errors here and there. Like, you need... The equal sign to be there twice. You need the brackets to be different. That sort of things. The bis script was, I think we had the, the repeat uh, variable. It was declared twice. Yes, that's the one. There we go. Up, oh, we delete it. Happy now? No, what is it? I. That's why it's so important to indent your script, your script, sorry, because just by looking at it, you can see that something is wrong. So up, there we go, now it's pretty and regular. What else do we have? Oh, again with a zero, okay. We know how to fix that. So I went through every script, a few of them really had no warnings whatsoever and uh, we had a couple more, I think it was with, yes, the Nazina script. Nazina I think is a wrench. And here, well, yes. When you want to say equal or superior, we only need one equal sign. This one, the rotate, you see MW edit is going to actually tell me how it's used. I actually changed that again. It's not rotex x1, it was rotate x90, 90, 90 being the angle I want to rotate. So I fixed that already. What did we have? Here we need two equals. Little things you see. Okay, and I think this is it for this. Oh, the brackets. Yes. In the in the is no sorry in the stealth script, uh, we had a little issue with brackets, so we're removing them, and we are done. Time for us to create a companion. I am back in the construction set. I went to the NPC tab, right click, new. I put a unique ID for my new companion. I named him George. I decided he was a Breton noble, because why not? Okay, we don't want George to be naked, do we? I'm gonna give him some armor straight away. I'm thinking steel is good. Let's give him a full set of steel armor. Now, to select multiple items, it's exactly the same way you do on Windows. Control Alt, and then you click to select all the items you want. No, not all of these. There we go, thank you. Drag them into the inventory. Brilliant. Let's give him a weapon as well. I'm thinking probably steel. Now I don't want to go all the way down the list. So I'm going to reorder the name column in alphabetical order. Go all the way down to S. And uh, if I remember, yeah, I got distracted and decided he could have something silver. I mean, he's a noble, right? So a silver enchanted weapon. Right. Now we want George to behave like a companion, to follow and that sort of things, and this is done through the script. You decide whether you want your companion to be combat magic or stealth, and then if you select the combat PC, your companion is going to be combat, but also his alignment is always going to be the same as yours. I'm going to go for the non-PC, so I can also show you how you can give him a random um, alignment. You want to go to leveled items, drag the alignment level, you see that's all the possible levels, drag it into the inventory and that's it. Your companion is going to be given a random alignment. We want our companion to have all the dialogues. To do that we want to put him for partner, faction, stranger, we don't want to meet as you know lovers already, that, that'd be weird. But then again why not? Um, if you go to the book tab, you can actually edit one of the existing journal. Be sure to change the ID to George. That's not how you type George. There we go. And then you're going to make all the relevant changes. So in the name, it's going to say George's journal. And then the book text, well, we put George again. And then, well, you have to be creative. I wasn't and I wanted to go quick, so bleh. there we go. That is George's story. Exciting life, George. Well done. Save. Definitely create a new object. And then we're going to drag that new, cr newly created journal for George into George's inventory. What I also want to give him is a birth sign. So we're going to go all the way to CM birth sign. No, no, no. Don't scroll. Select a line. Do it. There we go. Hit C. 
to go all the way down well done much faster I want George to be a lord you know noble I think it fits there we go we have George he exists the final thing we need to do we give him the sorry is give him the dancing animation so you go anim up you select dancing girl and now George can dance you're gonna do that for every companion you create but not for Argonians and Khajiits they don't have the the bone essentially to dance and your game would crash so don't do it George exists let's place him in Sadenine because because that's where all the mods go in Sadenine so that's gonna take a little while to load the cell is loading so we let it do its thing mm -hmm. we patient yes 23% I, I know you can do it computer you've done it many times there we go I'm going to select any of the models. I'm going to be careful not to move it or anything. That would be a dirty reference. And I hit C. It's C for side view. I know it's not very English, but it works. C for side view. I go back to my NPC tab. I drag George inside an in. Select him. Hit F so that he's going to be on the ground. It's not really important if you do, honestly. Um, but if he was too high, then he would fall and take some damage. Possibly die. To create a creature, the principle is pretty much the same. I want to make a pet Atronach. Again, give it a unique ID. You really, really have to and create a new object so we don't overwrite the basic Atronach. I'm going to name mine Toasty. There we go. Um, you could change anything you want. I think I'm going to give him more health so that Toasty doesn't die. You will also want to make sure that your creature is not aggressive. Click AI. Set fight to zero. Check out the spells to make sure they're not completely OP. It's nice to have companions, but if they do all the killing for you, meh, it's a bit boring. We want Toasty to behave like a companion, so we're going to attach the beast script to it. And now for the dialogues, it's gonna be a little more complicated. Unfortunately, there are no factions for beasts. So what we really need are the greetings. You go to the dialogue window, greetings, greeting zero, and you go all the way down. You can see all the greetings for all the existing creatures. You right click, you hit copy, and then for the new line, you say this new line is for my flame companion. Select the line and hit the arrows to the right to make it go down. If you wanted to make it go up, you would hit it on the left. And now, well, it's going to be a little tedious, but rinse and repeat and do that for all, um, how many? Six lines, I think. There's six lines, six different greetings. And these are the greetings uh, that will make him uh, follow, that will make him stay, and so on and so forth. So, while we have fun with that, uh, let me tell you a few things about cleaning your mod. You do your lines, you click OK, you hit save, you really, 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 really need to clean your mod. Just in case you, you edited uh, one of the vanilla objects, you move something around by accident, it really happens all the time. Uh, I will link again the little tutorial I made a few months ago on how to clean your mods with either the Morrowind Enchanter, no, Morrowind Editor, no, Enchanted Editor. Oh crap, it's in there, you'll see it in the title or test three command which is really nice magical almost we need to put our companion somewhere well not Sadenine that is so cliche let's go to Balmora I know I'm crazy sometimes same thing we're gonna load the cell it's gonna take a little bit of time this time I'm going to select an object somewhere let's say outside and hit T to get the top view all right, we move around and I'm gonna put Toasty right there. Now, don't be surprised, the, the flame Atronach has a weird model. Oh, it looks like it's dead. I promise you it won't be dead. It will be there when you, when you go. I'm dragging it down so that, you know, it doesn't fall from a great distance. And we're pretty much done. I completely ignore the bear. I don't know why I played around with the bear. Yes, I know, because I wanted to make sure that the F uh, shortcut worked as well but it didn't work with this one because the model is weird i want my toasty to be small and cute there half as small but twice the power save and we're done
I won't be releasing this on the Nexus because I want to play with it a little more, I want to test it a lot more, but I'm gonna drop bo drop box it, sorry, and leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. That's it for today, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to like, and I see you very soon for another review. Bye-bye!